Kia ora, good morning everyone, Rich Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at a new AF 35mm f1.8 lens from TT Artisan. It is an autofocus lens that is designed for APS-C cameras and it is available in the Nikon Z, Sony E and Fuji X Mount. I would like to say a big thank you to Pergear who sent me a Fuji X Mount sample for this review. So if you are interested in buying this lens after watching this review, please consider using the link I put in the video description to support Pergear. Now, while the sample I received is for the Fuji X Mount, optically this should be identical to the Nikon Z and the Sony E Mount version. The good thing with the Fuji X Mount is, I got the 40 megapixel Fuji XH2, which is the highest resolution APS-C camera in the market right now. So it allows me to do a more demanding test and also it will be a good reference for Sony and Nikon shooters when these companies release their high resolution APS-C camera in the future. This 35mm f1.8 is a very compact lens. The lens has full metal construction, including the metal lens mount. Even though the lens has a very affordable price, the build quality is very good. The lens feels very solid and well made. It doesn't have any of those cheap plastic feeling at all. If you have watched my recent interview with Mr. Lee, the founder of TT Artisan, Mr. Lee told me TT Artisan want to have a different aesthetic design for their different lenses instead of having a unified design for all the TT Artisan products. So for this 35mm f1.8 lens, it has a very simple, pretty understated design. There isn't any aperture ring or buttons or any special features on the lens. There's just a focus ring which turns very smoothly. The only markings on the lens are the AF 1.835 and then there's a white line here. And these markings are engraved on the lens, not printed, which makes the lens look and feel more premium. I think the aesthetic design of this TT Artisan 35mm lens matches the design of the Fuji X-H2 almost perfectly. But let me know if you agree with me or not. The only negative thing I can say is that this lens does not appear to be a weather sealed lens. There's no rubber seal on the lens mount. But consider this lens has a very affordable price. I don't think it is really reasonable for me to complain that it is not a weatherproof lens. I mentioned before, the lens has a metal lens mount, but it doesn't have any USB port on the lens mount or anywhere else on the lens. So how do you update the firmware? After all, it is really important for third-party lenses to be able to update firmware. And TT Allison has been quite good at providing firmware update to improve the performance of their lenses. And in case there is a new camera or new camera firmware that cause issues with their lens, they could also release new firmware to address that. So how do we update the firmware if the lens does not have any USB port at all? Well, the answer is the lens cap. The rear lens cap that comes with the lens has a USB-C port on it. So you just need to put the lens cap onto the lens and you can now connect the lens to the computer to update firmware. I think that is a great idea. And I like the fact that this lens cap just comes with the lens as some other companies are selling their USB dock separately for pretty much exactly the same purpose and you have to pay extra money for that. But not with TT Artisan as this is just the standard rear lens cap that comes with the lens. The only downside of this design is if you are someone like me who usually just makes up all my lens caps, you have to remember not to do that or it will take you a bit of time to search for the correct lens cap when you want to update the firmware. The lens comes with a removable lens hood which looks very nice in terms of aesthetic design and it should also provide very good physical protection to the front element of the lens. 
So unless you need to go to some very dusty places, you really shouldn't need to get any UV filter to protect the lens. But if you do want to use a filter, the lens filter thread is 52 millimeter and you could install one filter with the lens hood. Now, while I do really like the lens hood, one little problem is if you use the lens hood, then you cannot use the provider lens cap. Despite this lens has a solid metal construction, it is still very lightweight. My Fuji X sample weights exactly 200 grams. When I mount it on the Fuji XH2, it feels very well balanced. This 35mm f1.8 lens is TT Artisan's third autofocus lens. And you can see TT Artisan is becoming more confident with their autofocus technology as it is their first f1.8 lens and it also has a slightly longer focal length. So overall, it is more demanding in terms of autofocus performance compared to their previous autofocus lens. The lens is an internal focus lens, so that means the length of the lens doesn't change when you adjust the focus. When I test this lens with the Fuji X-H2, I found the autofocus performance is quite decent. When taking photos, autofocus speed is reasonably fast. Features like face detection works as expected. Continuous autofocus also works pretty well. And it is similar for recording video. Autofocus is smooth and reasonably fast. However, autofocus is not completely silent. I can hear the autofocus noise, especially when I'm shooting indoor. I wouldn't say it's loud, but most latest autofocus lenses in the market are virtually silent and this TT Artisan lens is not. I think the autofocus noise from this lens is more similar to a good DSLR lens. Even when I'm doing many focus, there's also a little bit of clicking noise when I turn the focus ring. The noise shouldn't be a problem at all for photographers, but if you are a videographer, especially if you record video in quiet indoor place, then you have to be careful if you don't want to capture any autofocus or manual focus noise. If you use it outdoor, then I don't think it will be a problem at all. The minimum focus distance of this lens is 0 0.6 meter or 2 feet. I do not know the exact maximum magnification ratio, but this is a photo that I shot at the minimum focus distance for you to look at the maximum magnification. The sharpness is surprisingly good at minimum focus distance, even at f1.8. The photo is sharp and it has good contrast. Stopping down the lens would improve the sharpness a little bit, but I think the main difference is it just gives you more depth of view and a little bit less chromatic aberration in the slightly out of focus area. We'll have a look at the image sharpness now. I went to see my friends at the Auckland Camera Center as I want to do some comparisons with the Fuji XC 35mm f2 lens, which the retail price is quite similar to this TT Artisan lens. But turns out they don't stock that lens, but they do have a demo unit of the more expensive XF 35mm f2 WR. So I thought, yeah, why not do a comparison with this Fuji XF lens, even though the price of the Fuji is a little bit more than two times the price of the TT Artisan. So I'm pretty sure the Fuji lens would be better, but I'll be interested to see how big the difference is. And let's start by looking at the center sharpness. At f1.8, TT Artisan's center sharpness is good, but when I pixel peep the photo, there is a little bit hint of softness. I think it's still not bad for a photo shot at wide open at 40 megapixel. At f2, the TT Artisan is very sharp already. Surprisingly sharp. Compared with the Fuji, 
if we pixel peeping at 200% zoom, the Fuji is marginally sharper, but the difference is just very small. At f2.8, the TT Artisan becomes very sharp and pretty much the same as the Fuji. From around f5.6, the center starting to become a bit soft due to diffraction. If you look at the corner, at f1.8, the TT Artisan is a bit soft, but if you shoot with a less demanding 20-ish megapixel camera, then it should look much better. If we compare to the Fuji at f2, both lenses are slightly soft, but the Fuji is better. And as I stop down the lens, the corner sharpness of both lenses would improve gradually. The TT Artisan is about half a stop to one stop behind the Fuji. At around f8, diffraction starting to lower the sharpness of the photos shot by both lenses. So overall, as I expected, the Fuji XF 35mm f2 WR is a sharper lens, but the TT Artisan is not bad at all, only slightly behind, which is really not bad considering the price of this lens is much cheaper than the Fuji. Next, we'll have a look at the bokeh. With the fast f1.8 maximum aperture, you could dissolve the background quite a bit, especially when your subject is at close distance. At f1.8, the bokeh balls look quite smooth, it doesn't look nervous, and I also don't see any onion pattern. There is a small amount of cat's eye effect near the corner, but it's not too serious. Stopping down the lens to f2.8 and the cat's eye bokeh is a lot less obvious now. Interestingly, the bokeh balls starting to become more like a polygon shape already at f2.8, but overall the bokeh still looks reasonably good even when you stop down the lens a bit. And we have a look at the vignetting now. At wide open, there is some pretty noticeable vignetting. It gets a bit better at f2.8, but even when I stop down to f5.6, there's still a little bit of vignetting noticeable. I have to stop down to f8 for vignetting to disappear. And next, chromatic aberration. And I'm happy to say that this 35mm lens chromatic aberration control meets my expectation. While I can see a bit of color finishing in some of my test photos or real world photos, the amount of color finishing is within acceptable level. And remember, I'm testing it on a 40 megapixel camera, which makes the chromatic aberration a lot more apparent compared to a 20-ish megapixel camera. There are many other fast prime lenses at similar price with a lot worse chromatic aberration than this TT Artisan lens. We'll have a look at distortion next. So this is my usual brick wall test photo. There is a small amount of barrel distortion, but it is really minor. When I review a TT Artisan lens, almost every time I would tell you lens flare is the major weakness of the lens, and this is the same this time. That's what I originally said in this review. But after I finished the view, I talked to TT Artisan and I told them the lens fair performance is pretty bad. And they told me they have actually made some improvements in this area to the final retail version. And they said they can send me another sample so I can test it again. So I received the second sample and I tested it again. Indeed, there are some noticeable improvements compared to the first sample in terms of lens flare performance. It's still not something I would say is great, but it is now usable, acceptable under most lighting condition. And I also found if I stop down the lens slightly to around f2.5 or f2.8, it can also help reduce the amount of lens flare as well. So, it is still the lens weakest area, but at least it's not terrible now. We'll have a look at the sun stars now. When you stop down the lens to around f8, we're starting to see some nice sharp 18 points sun stars. To stop down the lens further, 
The tails of the sun stars become sharper and longer. The sun stars looks very clean and nice at f16. Usually, large aperture lens aperture braid design is optimized for smooth round bokeh balls and that will sacrifice sun stars. So I'm a bit surprised the sun stars from this 35mm f1.8 lens are actually quite nice. And now let's have a look at the focus briefing. This is a test video that I changed the focus distance from 1 meter to about 15 meters and you can see there is some noticeable focus breathing. As a young and relatively small company, TT Allison has really shown us that you don't need to be a huge and long established company to create some good and fun products for us photographers and videographers. This 35mm f1.8 lens is a very good indication that shows us the company is getting more mature and confident with their products. Technically, this lens is really not bad. My biggest complaint would still be the lens flare performance as this is still an area I want to see improvements. However, the second sample I received from TT Allison is much better than the first early sample I received and the lens flare performance is now at usable level. Apart from that, the overall image quality of this lens is really not bad at all. I'm also very impressed by the build quality of this lens. It definitely feels more like a lens double its current price. And speaking of the price, it is priced as a budget lens, but apart from the lens flare and the autofocus is a little bit loud, the lens doesn't feel like a budget lens at all. If you don't really mind these shortcomings, this lens really offers you excellent value for money. And this 35mm focal length and the compact size makes it a great everyday lens that you can carry with you all the time very easily.